Hello you guys and welcome to my channel. I'm so excited to have you here. So in today's video, we are going to be doing another MLM horror story. So if you have an MLM horror story that you wanna send me or a scam story, I would love to read them here on my channel. I will leave my email down below where you can send them to me. And what's actually wild is today, I feel like we have more scam stories than we do horror stories to read. So we're gonna begin with reading one that says military manipulation which I thought would be very interesting to read. So it starts off with saying, hello, trigger warning for miscarriage. So if that topic is a trigger for you, I will leave down below timestamps so you could just skip to the next story if that topic is going to trigger you. She said, I don't have much of a story, but I have been surrounded by MLM since I joined the military in 2015. I have always been wide hipped with a large chest and thighs. I passed the physical fitness test and basic training easily because we would run every day and only eat what we were given, which is very true you only eat your three meals and I know for me in basic training I only had 10 minutes to eat each meal so that's definitely true she said my first year after basic training I became stressed and depressed and like many women that reflected in my weight I gained about 20 pounds in a year and my PT test numbers were awful one of my friends reached out with it works products and told me what they could do for me so I tried it and I started a healthier lifestyle along with a lot of therapy I lost weight and my weight got smaller I think I used the Vaseline like cream with the wrap and some cellulite lotion. I don't think I needed it anymore, so I stopped using it and had to eventually block my friend because she wouldn't stop messaging me. Fast forward three years and I suffered a miscarriage and went back to depression weight again. One of my higher ranking coworkers was really big into Arbonne and suggested I try it in order to prepare for my physical test. $350 later, which was a lot for someone of my rank, I had a month's worth of product and was added to a 30 day challenge Facebook group that gives recipes and encouragement and whatnot. The products were awful. The drinks tasted so bad and the shakes did not fill me up at all, but I stuck to it and ended up losing 15 pounds in a month. I didn't realize at the time that I had lost weight because I was starving myself. After 30 days, I decided not to order again. Unlike my first experience, I could not just block my coworker and she pressured me daily to buy more, saying how good I look and that I will just gain the weight back again. Not only was she a coworker, but one of my direct supervisors. It made work miserable and awkward. I counted down the days until I got stationed somewhere else, even though I really liked the base I was at. It was just awful to see her daily. I have seen it time after time. Military spouses have a hard time keeping consistent employment due to all the moves and military members don't make a lot of money. Being able to work from anywhere and have a community of support sounds fantastic for people and family members of people in our line of work, but it never turns out how I imagined. Eventually, you run out of friends and family, coworkers and fellow spouses become the target, and it either makes things awkward or burns bridges. Ever since then, I have been very local about my disdain of MLMs, how they hardly ever turn a profit and how horrible most of their products are. At this point, I have the rank to back me up and I don't care if it makes someone dislike me as long as I can save another service member from the scam. Thank you for the content. I found your channel while I was deployed. So first off, I found it very interesting that the companies that were targeting military members were fitness companies, things like It Works and Arbonne. But especially with her Arbonne story, I think it's a highly unethical for any supervisor in general to try and recruit you into MLMs or sell you a product, especially with the military. A lot of things can happen if you act certain ways towards your supervisor. So it's, in my opinion, highly unethical for this military member that is a supervisor to try and recruit her and get her to continue to buy products. But not just that, just the, the nasty comments that were made, not only from the Arbonne person, but the It Works person. Like, I think she said something along the lines of, oh, they said if I didn't buy the products, I would just gain the weight back. Like that's such a rude and like disrespectful things to say to somebody. So thank you so much to the person that sent me this. I think it kind of shows not only the military spouse aspect, which I think we talk about a lot. We talk about, especially on my channel, how military spouses are really targeted for MLMs, but what we don't really talk about as much is how much an actual military member can be targeted. And once a military member gets in, if they are high up in the military, it can be really hard because they'll start trying to recruit people that are under them, which again is super unethical and I think can make it 
really difficult work environment for the person that is underneath them. So I definitely think this story is interesting because it doesn't just talk about the military spouse aspect, but the actual experience of an active duty like service member. So thank you so much for sending me that. The next story that we are going to read is titled Horror Stories. And based on like just skimming it really quickly, it seems like there's a couple of different MLMs that they talk about. It looks like specifically Sensi. Oh, and Origami Owl. So this begins with, Hi, Deanna. I forget if you say names or not. I prefer you keep me anonymous. Anyway, to the MLM stories. Back in high school, I loved watching Teen Mom and its accompanying series. I graduated in 2013, if that gives a hint to the weight of it all. I had kind of been exposed to Tupperware growing up. A little bit of Body by V, which is nutritional shakes that were promoted to help you lose weight. I believe they were kind of affiliated with Beachbody, but nothing much. I am Canadian, so I find that they aren't talked about as much as they are in the state. I was following one of the teen mom people, Kaylin, and saw on her Instagram that she was always posting about Sensi and Origami Owl. Once I turned 18, I joined Sensi under Kale. <gasps> No, because I figured, hey, I get to talk to her because she's my sponsor. Well, no, absolutely nothing. So I knew nothing of the MLM, but I knew I had to get 150 PV, which was not dollar for dollar in Canada. Now it's about 200 PV, once every three months to stay active. Well, I didn't know how to work the business. I knew nothing. I spent thousands of dollars and got a credit card to support my business. The bank gave me a 10K credit at 18 when I made approximately that a year. I obviously couldn't afford to pay it back. Soon after my 19th birthday, I got sued by the bank for failure to pay even the minimum payment on my card. The only way out of the lawsuit was bankruptcy. So I filed and paid the monthly payment for nine months. It is newly off my credit because it has been a little over seven years since the discharge. However, I didn't learn from the bankruptcy. I was in and out of Sensi for years. When I first started Sensi, I also joined Jamberry. I forget what the requirements were, but I definitely spent a lot less with them. Since Sensi and Disney had partnered though, it has been unpleasant. I am a self-proclaimed Disney adult. Sensi reps are in no way allowed to promote in Disney groups on any socials because it is an obvious sale and Disney has said they can't do that. People don't listen even when you say it's against the rules. So now I spend my time reporting them. Anyone can too at compliance at sensi.com and input in the email as proof. I'm still recovering from my financial mistakes because the being in Sensi. Kale wasn't always my sponsor, but the fact that she didn't coach me at all, I felt didn't help me and made me spend even more since I didn't know how to promote it. Not that I wanted to because I didn't want to harass my family and friends. I find this so interesting because this shows exactly what we talk about when there are influencers or people who are famous, which clearly the people that were on Teen Mom became famous. When that happens and you end up joining their team, team, they normally don't have the capacity to actually help those people because most of the time when these individuals join MLMs, the company has asked them to and it ends up being sort of a brand deal or they join and then instantly make a bunch of money because the people that follow them are going to join and then they end up leaving and never promoting the company again. And like I said, that happens a lot. We've seen it happen with a lot of famous people or celebrities in general, not influencers, but celebrities promoting an MLM and then we never hear them talk about it again, but we can guarantee a couple thousand people probably joined and made them a quick buck. So it definitely seems like that's what happened with the Kaylin individual is she got big off of Teen Mom and then she decided to join this MLM and most likely didn't help anybody. She just made the quick buck from it and then continued on with her life. And then clearly the people that ended up joining because of her ended up in situations like this individual, which in my opinion, going all the way to having to file bankruptcy at such a young age is not an easy thing to like financially recover from. And it just shows how vulnerable people at 18 really are to MLMs and individuals like this. So the next story we are going to read just says horror stories. It says, hi, Deanna, I have recently come across your channel and took a deep dive into MLMs. It didn't take me long to figure out that I've had more than the average amount of personal stories tied to multiple different MLMs that I thought I'd share. A handful of my stories came from my mother's involvement with multiple different companies throughout my childhood. Something to keep in mind about my mom is that she moved countries to marry my dad. We're just having so many military like horror stories today. She said my dad who was in the military at the time. 
She had six children and found herself alone at home most of the time in a country where she had no real community of people who knew and could fall back on. This has since changed, but looking at her multiple stints in different companies showed me exactly how she could easily fall into the trap of an MLM. I have quite a few handful of stories, which I will try to keep as summarized as possible, but this could end up pretty lengthy. My first real memory I have from an MLM was when my mom joined Plexus. This story does talk about eating habits in children as well as exercise, so warning for that. My mother has always, even to this day, been trying her best to stick to diets and maintain a better weight. I must have been in middle school when this first happened, but what I remember the most vividly was the upline who had recruited my mom into the company coming over to my house during the first week of my mom's recruitment. This older lady had sat my mom, my older sister, myself, and my kindergarten-aged little sister down to talk to all of us. I have three brothers who were completely left out of the equation. She started rambling on about what we eat in a day and asked us if we took part in any sports at school to stay fit or if we made healthy eating choices when snacking outside of mealtimes. I remember being completely bewildered by her questions. My oldest sister had been at most 14 years old. I was about 10 to 12 and my little sister could have only been just five. We were children being asked questions about exercise and food choices. She quickly showed us a few products that were just as tasty as milkshakes and encouraged us to try them out. This was an older lady, so I lied quite flatly about my enjoyment of the drink so I wouldn't upset anyone, but the drink was disgusting. She left my mom with an abundance of those drink mixes and suggested filling our school water bottles with them. Looking back, I still can't understand why she had been trying to sell the products to a bunch of children when my mom was the person she had recruited. I'm guessing she was trying to get her to buy more products and show her kids enjoyment as an example that it could be for more than just people like her. Needless to say, Plexus didn't stick and my mom left the company when she realized she was losing more money than she was earning. When my mom joined her next MLM, Pampered Chef, it was through a teacher at my middle school. This one didn't last near as long, but I do have an extremely vivid memory of being pulled out of my English class by this teacher who would give me tons of papers and pamphlets that I would then give to my mom. The only real irritant that came from this was the disruption she caused to my schooling. Despite having my mother's contact information, when my mom was getting ready to cut off the company, the teacher reverted to pulling me out of class and asked me direct questions about my mother's involvement in progress. It was weird, and I was glad to be moving into high school soon after, so I would no longer have to see this teacher. I didn't even have her in any of my classes. That is unethical. Like if you're a teacher, be a teacher or like whatever you are, but don't involve children in your MLM mess asking what their mother's involvement is. That's so icky and just weird. The most prominent MLM that both of my parents took part in was World Ventures. They lost a ton of money from this company. We took two main trips underneath them, one cruise and one trip to Disney. There were eight people in my family and we lived on one income. So taking trips like this just weren't feasible for us. However, because of the constant pressure to book a trip and start promoting the blue sign in new spot, my parents wound up booking these. I remember on our trip to Disney, we had to drive out to California. We stopped at multiple places along the way, the Grand Canyon, Vegas, San Francisco, etc. At every stop, we were being shoved these blue, you should be here signs to pose for pictures. Never mind the fact that these stops were a product of us not being able to afford tickets to fly out to California and that these places were not included in our vacation packages they had bought into. When we did finally make it to Disney, the only World Ventures perk we had that came as a part of our package was access to a buffet in one of the restaurants that we still had to pay for. We had just a cleared off section to sit in that was dedicated to World Ventures. Our cruise vacation was something similar, very few extra perks for being part of World Ventures, and a few mandatory training sessions during the actual cruise so they could try recruiting right there on the ship. The last and final story has nothing to do with my family, but rather my high school dance team. A Mary Kay rep had visited us during one of our practice sessions. We had been testing out new makeup for competition wear lately and somehow wound up stuck in an hour and a half long presentation on the Mary Kay company. None of us were 18 except for a few seniors, but even then, the idea and opportunity were being pitched to us as if we could 
do something with it. We had to ask questions to receive a goodie or free makeup product. We were being forced to write our name and number down on a slip of paper, and we're very nearly subjected to one of their lipsticks as a final makeup product for our competition makeup. Fortunately, we never used Mary Kay, but now I think about it, I was quite sure the product we did end up using was just another makeup MLM. The rep did text me at some point a few months later asking if I was 18 and interested in the opportunity. I blocked the number and carried on with my life. You go, girl. I still find it strange how she was pitching to a group of teenage girls, mostly underage, a business opportunity that we legally could not join, even if we wanted to. And to be contacted later on down the line asking about our agent, it was very strange. Those are the bulk of my memories with MLMs, but as I discover more companies and dive deeper into the topic, I'm starting to realize just how close I've been to these things my entire life. I'm glad that I can now submerse myself into these topics and make sure I never find myself trapped in a company myself. Shout out to that. That's actually wild though. That's a lot of interactions in my opinion. Before the age of 18, I feel like a lot of people probably experience their parents doing Mary Kay or their grandparent having Mary Kay products or whatnot, but I feel like this is like very close to the MLM, which I feel like doesn't happen from a lot of people. I feel like, again, some people know, oh, my mom did Mary Kay, but they didn't really know, okay, what Mary Kay was as a kid. But as they became older, they were like, oh snap, my mom loved Mary Kay. Like she did parties at the house and they didn't recognize it. But these are a lot of different like situations and scenarios that happened for this individual. So I'm curious, have any of you had a lot of these interactions when you were under the age of 18? I also think it's weird, like these companies and these individuals to try and recruit people under 18, especially the first one that I believe it was the first story she talked about. The fact that someone came into the house and was talking to a 14 year old, 10 year old and five year old about their eating habits is very strange to me and something that should not be happening. So thank you so much for sharing your story. Now I did get a scam story sent to me about home energy assistance, which I've never heard of. And there wasn't an actual like story written. Someone just sent screenshots to my horror story email so let's see what it says the email says internet scammer tries to scam with home energy assistant each is numbered in order and screenshots of the agent are also attached so i will be blurring the individual that is sending the messages or that is in the dm so i'm going to read these messages about this scam but i'm going to blur out the person i feel like dms and stuff i don't like to share the actual individual when it comes to these stories, because I just feel weird doing that, like posting someone's DMs and stuff like that. Let's read it. Let's say the sender is Jay, and the person that is responding to Jay is Becky. So Becky's our friend. Becky's the one who is DMing the other individual that is clearly in this scam. So Jay messaged Becky and said, hello, and Becky responded, hi. Jay said, how are you? Becky said, good, how about yourself? Jay said, I'm okay. Have you heard or being notified about the recent news going on lately? And Becky said, no. Jay responded with, it's about home energy assistance. It's giving to randomly selected people to take care of kids, buy houses, pay rent, and maintain the standard of living? Have you heard from them? Becky said, nope. Jay responded with, I got $50,000 delivered to me when I applied for it and you don't have to pay it back. It's not advertised publicly. That's why you haven't heard about it. Do you know that you can also apply? Becky said, how do you apply? Jay said, should I go ahead and send you the link that will direct you to the online agent in charge of it so that you can also apply? Becky said, sure. And then it's a Facebook link that Jay sent. And Jay said, this is the online link Link where I got mine. You can text him now to let him know that you are going to apply, then he'll put you through to the guidelines on how to claim yours. And the person sent, like clearly they clicked on the page, the agent, and it's literally somebody's Facebook page that says who they are. They have 100 followers, 62 likes, and their photo that's actually on their Facebook says legitimate on it. It has to be real. 
It has to be legitimate if they have that word in their picture. So Becky responded and said, oh, I thought it would be a .gov site since I know you can do it through the state or federal agency. Jay said, no, this is how I applied for it. That was when I got mine. And then Jay sent FedEx packages with money in it. So Becky responded and said, well, that's odd. And Jay said, I don't think this is from the government because you don't have to pay it back. It's free. Becky said through the state site, it's free too. How come the box doesn't have your name on it? And Jay said, this is how I applied for it and I won't take your time at all before you win it. I signed documents and paperwork when they delivered it to me. Becky said, now that I win it, that's not what you disclosed in the beginning. Jay said, you have to message the agent in charge of it through the link and apply for it. Becky said, why though, when I can just do it through my state site? Jay said, and he will put you through some process and let you know what to do. This is how I applied for it. There are too much scammers out there that are impersonating the program. So don't go and fall for them. This is the real page to apply for it. I don't know why people who send these type of DMs think that they don't come off as the biggest scammer. Like you're not trying to like lie and convince somebody to like join this company. Like we see a lot happen with MLMs where they sound pretty convincing, but this is just like blatant scam. Like it, it's like, no dude, you're, you're scamming people. Like it's easy. Oh yeah. Sending someone a random DM and saying, oh, it's legitimate. You should join this thing. Like, no, it's clearly a scam. So Becky responded and said, oh, the agent has a cover page on Facebook behind him saying legitimate, which makes me awfully suspicious. Same. Jay said, yeah, it's real and legitimate. Becky said, doubtful. Jay said, believe me, this is real. I won't let you know about it if this was a hoax. Try it and you won't regret it. Becky said, yeah, you would. What proof do you have that this is real? Or should I say, what other stock photos do you have to try and prove that this is real? Jay said, it's real, I swear. And they sent a video, like a 19 second video. And Becky wrote, oh, more stock video of cash? Proves nothing. You buy fake cash off Timu that looks real. Jay said, well, I can't force you to do it then. This is not fake cash. Becky said, yeah, it is. Jay said, it's not. And Becky said, yeah, it is. I know you're a scammer. These agent bullshit has been going around since COVID, each a different program with huge scams of money trying to get people in. And then that's the end of the DM. So I am so curious how people don't think that they come off as a scammer or maybe they, maybe they do and they just don't care. But when they are sending these type of emails or messages, it's clearly a scam. If you're just texting someone, oh, you should join this and you send them a link with a photo of money like clearly it's a scam and not many people are going to be roped into something like that they're just trying to find someone that may not know like social media and stuff that's what I'm suspecting I just find it very weird and icky so the next horror story it looks like it's a horror story and a request to do a deep dive on it, which I found interesting. So maybe, maybe I will. Maybe I will once I read this and see what it is. So let's read it together. It says, my mother-in-law is involved in Lavelle Thrive's MLM. She makes barely any money, but is spending tons of money that she doesn't have to support her posting about the products she's using. I saw where the company is coming out with new healthy ready to heat meals named My Fresh Meals. Okay, so Lavelle apparently is coming out with meals called My Fresh Meals. She said, the more I saw the promotional photos, the more I thought they looked very familiar. I did very little research to find that a company out of Florida, Fresh Meal Plan, has been around for some years and sells a similar product. The products are identical. Same menu, same recipe, even the same nutrition information. They are around $13 to $15 a meal, which is insane to me. But if you go with the original company, it's about 2 to $3 cheaper. These MLM Huns are stating that it's their product when it clearly isn't. It makes my blood boil that they don't even know where the products are coming from. They're just fed lies and told to promote. I wish more people were talking about this topic. I wonder if the original company knows about them putting Lavelle labels on their packaging and changing the names up a bit, which are the cheesiest names I've ever heard of, by the way. 
I'll drop some links of what the original company is and some do the MLM information too. Hopefully you can do a deep dive. I've attached a few screenshots of a promoter that shared what the meals are going to be. So she's saying that Lavelle is essentially stealing meals from a smaller company that's out in Florida, which that smaller company sells meal plans that are called Fresh Meal Plan. And then Lavelle's now about to sell something called My Fresh Meals. So I'm definitely going to look into that on the side but I do have to put in there that this is clearly this individual's opinion and experience and I'm gonna look more into it and let you guys know what I find. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching the first MLM Horror Stories of 2024. If you would like me to continue on this series throughout the year where I post once a month of MLM Horror Stories for y'all, then definitely make sure to send me your either MLM Horror Story, Scam Story, or Influencer Story that you would like to send me and I would love to read it here on my channel. So if you made it this far, in the video leave a what emojis do we got what emojis i gotta come up with new ones i oh leave a book emoji in the comments down below because i can't even tell y'all how much reading i've been doing in the past two weeks being back in my spring semester of school just this week i have 160 pages to read and write extensive notes on so cheers to that <laughs> and i just finished the 150 pages i had to read last week so yeah Leave a book emoji down below if you made it this far. And then don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in the next video. Why did that make me emotional? I'm emotional at 9 a.m. I counted out the... I counted down stories interesting because it not just talk because it doesn't just this story doesn't talk about e I must have been in middle school when this first happened, but when I remember the most but what I remember the most I remember being quite no she left my mom with an um well oh why'd I read that as ambiance abundance the only real the oh, I my tongue twisted.